Hi there, Penny Carpenter here with my concept module about spatial thinking and how it can add value to our remote sensing research. So let's begin with a little exercise. If I asked you to describe what you see in the Landsat image to the right, where would you begin? Did you identify a body of water, a river, or maybe the town of Bastrop since it is labeled? Oh wait, what about the word Lukey? Did you see it? According to a NASA blogger, a landowner cleared forests leaving some trees to spell his family name. The Lukey landscaping can be used to evaluate spatial resolution of photographs taken by astronauts from space. Okay, back to the features you found in the image. Now, can you describe their locations? When you do this, you are using elements of spatial thinking. And that's a good thing. Let me tell you why. The Geospatial Technology Competency Model and the Metadacum for GIS and Remote Sensing identify abilities to think spatially, communicate, and write as specific workplace skills needed for GIS and Remote Sensing. If you describe the locations of the features in the previous slide's image, you were thinking and communicating spatially. Understanding the elements of spatial thinking can enhance the communication and written analysis of remote sensing projects. So let's take a look at the different elements of spatial thinking. In 2006, the National Resource Council identified the three elements of spatial thinking in a publication called Learning to Think Spatially. The elements are 1. Concepts of space, 2. Tools of representation, and 3. Reasoning. Remember the Landsat image of Bastrop? Let's use it as we explore the elements of spatial thinking. You've already seen the Landsat image on the left. It was taken on August 26, 2011. That year, drought conditions in Texas were some of the worst on record. On September 4th, wildfires spread near Bastrop, burning thousands of acres and destroyed over a thousand homes. Can you see the burn scars in the Landsat image on the right? Think for a moment about the space that was burned, how the Landsat image represents the burn scar, and how we might quantify or reason this event. In other words, let's think spatially about it. The first element of spatial thinking is concepts of space. How would you describe the absolute location of this event? Does the area of interest have a natural boundary or a particular shape? How big is the area affected? How does the location of the event relate to other areas? In other words, how far is it from Bastrop or the lake? And in what direction did it spread? Describing these characteristics of an event communicates a very clear picture of its place and space. The next element of spatial thinking is tools of representation. Landsat data is represented in an array of pixels containing reflectance values. Check out other concept module videos about spatial resolutions and spectral signatures. Special image analysis software is used to view Landsat data. Composite images can be made to enhance the representation of features. In this Landsat image, the lake is represented with dark blue pixels, vegetation is green, soil is tan, and the burn scar is a dark brown. Combining different tools and techniques can produce some spectacular imagery to represent a space or event. The final element of spatial thinking is reasoning. Here you might have a set of questions to answer, such as where did the fire start? In which direction did it spread? How much land was burned? The structure of the burn scar may have a pattern. If so, does the pattern correlate with other features? Was elevation or terrain a factor? Thinking and reasoning about the data may reveal spatial correlations, identify causes, or inform predictions. In the case of the Bastrop Complex fire, remote sensing and spatial thinking were used to quantify and describe the size of the fire. The information was used to justify FEMA requests and to guide plans for reforestation. Here are three questions about this concept module. You can pause the video now as you formulate your answers. You'll find the answers on the next slide when you are ready to continue. I hope you found this module useful. 
And the next time you communicate the results of a remote sensing project, remember to reflect on the elements of spatial thinking.